My name is Ethan Feintreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. Utah's West Desert consists of some of the most hardy wildlife in the country. Temperatures here can range from 0 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And unlike your typical desert, it's no stranger to a snowy winter season. But here there's a moderate variety of snakes, including possibly the fastest species in Utah. No, I'm not talking about the coach whip. I'm talking about a close relative, the striped whip snake. This beautiful species has eluded me for years. However, these snakes have proven to be more elusive than I thought. I'm lightheaded. I can feel my heart pumping in my head. This better be worth it. <laughs> Looking through leftover scrap pieces in the desert is also a great way to find them. But instead of getting a snake, I found only a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, snakeskin. More snakeskin. The time of year they're most active has passed, and they're getting progressively more difficult to find. However, monsoon season has begun, and the moisture these storms leave behind means these snakes may decide to emerge to get a drink of water. The mix of leftover moisture and heat of the sun is usually a good recipe for finding snakes, and after flipping a few old cross ties, I finally found one. Oh my god! Oh, I can't, I, I'm shaking so much, dude. After finding so many dead ones, I find a live one. And here you have it. This is the very snake I have spent over a year trying vigorously to find. This is now my 11th live snake species I've found in Utah. Let me tell you something. I have had one hell of a time trying to find this snake. This snake gets its name of course, because of all the stripes that run down its body. The closest thing to this you can find in Utah is a coach whip, which does not have stripes going down their back at all. When these guys adult, their overall appearance changes just a little bit. Why? Because they gain more stripes. When you look at this whip snake, you'll see a bunch of stripes going down its back. In fact, this snake most often, more than other whip snakes, is confused with garter snakes. But it's very easy to tell which one you're finding because they live in very different habitats. If you are out in the middle of the desert like this, you're looking at a whip snake. But if you are in an area with a source of water nearby, then you are likely looking at a garter snake. Another thing is if you ever get to handle them, you'll notice that a striped whip snake is very, very smooth. And then if you ever get your hands on a garter snake, you'll notice that they have a very rough texture on the on their back scales. So this snake, if it didn't have a stubby's tail, probably is around four feet. And it's only about as big around as my index finger. That kind of gives you a sense of how long and slender these snakes truly are. So how big do these snakes actually get? They get upwards of about six feet. And on average, they're usually decent sized snakes. You can see this is uh, when this snake is stretched out here, I'll step back. Look at that. Big boy. So this snake is long and slender for a reason. It allows them to be fast. It allows them to dart through little areas. They're extremely agile, extremely versatile, very, very, very fast snakes. And you can see, I kind of turn him and he keeps his head pointing a certain direction. Isn't that cool? I don't know why they do that. Comment below if you know why they do that. They're just kind of known for that, and I think that's really, really silly. Let me tell you something. There's been so many times I see a root of a tree or a branch from a sagebrush bush, and I just, my heart just starts racing. I'm like, finally a whip snake. Oh. These guys look exactly like a branch. Once you go out looking for them, you'll know exactly what I mean, I promise. <laughs> this is a diurnal species, exclusively. This is never a snake you'll see out slithering at night. This snake bit me, and you can kind of sort of see I've been bleeding, but is it dangerous? Am I, is my hand gonna swell up? Am I gonna die? Is this venomous? Not even mildly. This is a completely non-venomous snake. This is a, never a snake you have to worry about. So what do these snakes eat? What is their diet? <coughs> they eat coughs. No, I'm just kidding. 
Now, I would say this is a pretty opportunistic feeder. They eat a very wide range of things, going from reptiles to amphibians to small rodents from time to time. But most often, these guys go after lizards. Well, what these guys do, very similar to garter snakes and racers, is when they're looking for their food, they do something called periscoping. They raise their head up really, really high so they can get as best a view of everything around them before they see, oh, a lizard, and then they dive down and then chase it and pursue it. But they eat tons of other reptiles besides lizards. For example, they eat other snakes. Like king snakes, they go after other snakes, including other whip snakes. They go after smaller baby snakes of pretty much any species, including even venomous snakes. An adult like this would be happy to eat a baby rattlesnake. You can notice the snake has really, really large eyes on its head for good reason. They have better eyesight than most snakes, probably in the United States. Um, so any predator that comes by, these snakes will spot it from a mile away and it will be gone. And so these guys avoid predators really well. And that's part of why they're so hard to find because they will always see you before you see them and they'll be gone before you even get there looking for it. And the snake at first was really nervous, like it bit me as soon as I grabbed its tail. And you can see he's not biting, he's, he's barely even moving, he's just sitting in my hand like a burrito. <laughs> they re eventually realize they're not in any danger and that's the great thing about snakes, they do have brains and people think that snakes are out to get them when in reality they can be these amazing nice calm creatures and most of the time that's exactly what they are. They're just living their own lives in the exact same way we humans are. Does this snake make a good pet? I do this with all the snakes I catch. In case, for those of you, you're wondering, did I just find a really good pet snake? <laughs> you thought wrong. Feeding these guys is almost impossible because they eat lizards and snakes. That's a very hard thing to get a hold of. They take up a lot of ground, so they, though they will explore whatever enclosure you make for them because they're super active snakes, you would need a humongous enclosure because they take up so much ground. Over the course of a single summer, they'll travel miles and miles and miles. Don't get one of these as a pet. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the striped whip snake. Thank you guys so much for watching. To most herpetologists, a striped whip snake is nothing to get too excited about. But because I've worked so hard to find one, I'd say this was one of the most exciting finds of my entire life. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.